Joe and I and the kids uh, years ago now, we, we used to live in Eastbourne and I was working for a church there. And during our time there, uh, there was an event that was held called Ask Eastbourne. And, and what happened was people went out on the streets and they asked everybody in Eastbourne one question. That question was this, if you could ask God anything, what would you ask him? If you could ask God anything, what would you ask him? And I wonder if you can guess what the most popular question was. The most popular question was something along these lines. Uh, if God is good and powerful, then why do bad things happen? It's a great question. And it's a question that indeed might be on uh, some of our minds uh, at the moment, given our current situation with COVID-19. Where is God in all of this? If God is so wonderful as you Christians profess, that doesn't seem to fit with my lived experience. Does God have answers for what we're going through at the moment? Well, I thought uh, we'd start this week uh, to do a, a thought for the week, one a week, um, and post them on our website, our Facebook page, uh, so you can uh, view them at your leisure, share them with your friends and family. Uh, just unpacking some of the issues that are being raised through uh, COVID-19 pandemic. And so this morning, I just want to spend a few moments unpacking that question uh, of suffering. I'm not going to cover everything. Uh, this really is just a start to get us thinking about what the Bible says about this issue and why actually uh, it makes the most sense over any other response uh, to the issue of suffering. Now, there are uh, two angles to this question that we're going to look at. Um, there's the logical, so processing the question in our mind. Uh, then there's also the the lived experience response to this question, because suffering affects us all at some point in life. Life is painful, and so this is a really important issue for us to think about. So first of all, the logical. Um, the objection goes, as I've, I've already said, if, if God is loving and powerful, we wouldn't have the world we live in with suffering and evil. It's the very existence of evil disproves the existence of God. Now there is in that very statement um, a value judgment about evil. That is that it exists, that there is right and there is wrong. But I want to just ask you, how do we know what is right and, and what is wrong? You know, broadly, we, we can determine good and evil in, in two ways. Uh, we can determine it individually. So, you know, I decide what is right. I decide what is wrong. Um, or morality evolves and societies decide what is evil according to whether it is legal. If it's legal, it's moral. But there's a slight issue with, with both of those because on an individual basis, how can we trust that we know what is right and wrong? And on the second point, what about something like apartheid in South Africa? That was legal, but it was clearly wrong and evil. But I want to suggest that at the very root of that statement, that the existence of evil disproves God, it actually presupposes the existence of God and a Christian framework. You see, anyone who judges something to be evil is actually acknowledging that God exists and there is some kind of ultimate moral law. Let me explain. Uh, if there is no God, if God doesn't exist at all, then there really is nothing special about human life or horrendous about human suffering. If you believe that humans are, are just a bunch of chemicals who have evolved, then, then human suffering is just really a, a series of of biochemical stimuli in a, in a meaningless world. If we really are nothing than just more than an evolutionary fluke, if we are just sophisticated organisms, then why does it hurt and make us sad when bad things happen to people and to us? 
You see, if we actually deny God, we deny the very concepts of good and evil. Without God in the picture, they lose all meaning. And actually saying there is no God leads to a denial of categories of good and evil because there's no basis for them. But Christianity makes most sense. Evil is evil, and suffering hurts because human life is sacred. And it's sacred because we have been made in the image of God. God gives ultimate moral law. He is the standard. And because we are image bearers of God, we have in us a sense of what is right and wrong. If we acknowledge God, evil is evil and human life is so special. Acknowledge God and, and we begin to see why we are outraged at injustice in the world. Why it is that suffering hurts so much. Well, that's the start to think about the logical aspect of, of the question. But questions of suffering don't exist in a vacuum. Um, suffering is a reality that we all face. You know, that objection that evil disproves the existence of God, that can seem quite a, an abstract statement. Maybe you've never really thought about that. But you do feel the weight of suffering. Maybe it's illness or death or the loss of a job. Or maybe someone that you know has died in the coronavirus pandemic. Now, I'm not meaning to caricature points of view here. I appreciate fully there are nuances and I haven't got the time to go into depth. So this is a very sort of general uh, look. But, but if we take the view that humans are just an accident, that we have just evolved, where does that leave us with suffering and how we process it? Well, I'd suggest that suffering and evil, they just become things that happen. Life's completely random and there ain't nothing you can do about it. Under this view, good and evil aren't even categories that exist. We shouldn't even raise any objections and questions about suffering and evil. If we're morally outraged about something and we are just evolved beings and chemicals, so what? It is what it is. But what about Eastern philosophy? You know, in gen very general terms, it teaches in relation to suffering that suffering is just an illusion. That good and evil are illusions, and yet that way of living seems unlivable. But one of the many things that convinces me of the truth of Christianity is its explanation and response to suffering. You see, we are outraged at evil and we feel the pain of suffering because we are made in the image of a good and a loving God. And every single human being matters. That is why it hurts when we hear over 30,000 people have died because of COVID-19. And really, it's only Christianity that doesn't deny the reality of suffering and evil. Countless books of the Bible, Psalms, Ecclesiastes, which we're looking at at the moment in our morning services, Job, Lamentations, Jesus himself suffers when his friend dies. They all acknowledge the pain of suffering. Paul who wrote a lot of the Old Testament, the, the, the New Testament, sorry. We read he has a thorn in his flesh. Christianity does not duck suffering. It recognises it as part of the human experience. It doesn't minimise it. It acknowledges that we are part of a broken world. The world where we see things and experience things like COVID-19. But Christianity is not just explanation, it is intervention. You know, no one should presume that they are more concerned with suffering and evil than God. Because God showed his concern for us and this world at the cross. Where Jesus, his son, died and rose to new life. You see, God entered this world, this broken world, in the person of Jesus to deal with evil and suffering. Jesus himself experienced suffering and pain, 
so that we have a saviour, a friend, a lord, a king, who knows what it is to feel pain. We have a saviour who promises to be with us in the pain, and we have a saviour who has secured a place for us in his new creation where there will be no more pain. You know, love is the defining characteristic of the God of the Bible. And that is the framework that, that we're given that makes the, the most sense of our suffering because we're made in the image of a loving God. Suffering hurts. But because God is loving, he has done something very real and very effectual about it. Which shows to us that God at the moment is involved in our suffering and he cares. And that is how it's best to begin to process what's going on at the moment with COVID-19. God himself Now, this topic is, is a vast one, and I've just really begun to scratch the surface, and I know that maybe questions that have come up out of what I've said. Um, if you do have questions or comments, do feel free to email me, um, steve at houghtonchurch.co.uk, and I'd love to start a dialogue um, with you about all of this. Maybe you're thinking, actually, it does make a bit more sense of my lived experience. Why not come and find more Come out and find out more about Jesus. We're going to be running a course called Jesus the Game Changer, how he has changed history. I'll be starting that in a few weeks' time. Again, drop me an email if you'd like to come along to that. We'll do it via Zoom. Um, and it promises to be a great time. Well, thanks for listening. Do keep tuning in each week uh, for our weekly devotions. I believe my wife is going to bring the next one next week.